that first breath of fresh air when you open the door or the windows in the morning. That's good stuff. I'm here in Deer River, Minnesota. We're headed south down to Brainerd. From there, I still don't have a plan. We'll figure it out, figure it out as we go. We're going to get the truck ready to go here, get it warmed up, go grab ourselves a coffee from the truck stop next door. We'll be on our way. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget, make sure you're subscribed down below. Beautiful, beautiful. This engine is still doing fantastic. Still keeping all the oil. It's good. Not leaking any. It's done something good under here. So this load I showed you yesterday, still got it. It's a bit of an odd shaped load. A little bit more of a hassle to tarp, but we got her done. Like I was showing you yesterday, we're watching that corner up there very closely. But it doesn't seem to be coming through. I forgot to put edge protection underneath there to save my tarps. But I made the decision, the executive decision, that it would be okay. So I hope I decided right. So far, so good. We have another hour and a half to go down the road. I think we'll be fine. Oh, righty then. Ready to go. We're buckled in. Truck is ready to go. Lights are on. Got a coffee. Bought myself a little fruit cup thingy here. It's going to be delicious. Oh, the pineapples are my favorite. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. Okay. Rock and roll. Just double check my eyeballs that I saw the trailer was still attached, but I'm just gonna Spike the trailer there just to make sure it's not gonna fall off. There we go. It's coming with me Oh, and it's a beautiful day out too. It's not too sunny, but it's not too cold either I was thinking of going all the way to Brainerd last night yet, but I just didn't have the energy for it. And I pulled in here and I saw that they had one parking spot available last night yet. And I took that as a sign. I took it and we went to sleep right here. Turn left again. Turn left again. Today would be a great day for a walk. I'd like to go for a walk. We'll see what's happening after I get unloaded. I still don't know what my reload is going to be. They probably have something like tentatively lined up and they're just waiting to see uh, what time I'll be unloaded at. And they probably have other guys in the area too. So whoever gets unloaded first gets whatever's available, right? So that is our first priority this morning is get unloaded as quickly as possible. And we're just in time for the parade, the Deer River Parade. This is the Truman Show right here. Call it the Trucker Josh, the TJ Show. As soon as Josh wants to get on the road, suddenly everybody else is on the road. Oh, look, here comes FedEx too. Why not? Why not? Come on, come on. We got room for everybody. Come on, join the parade. I don't need to get on the road. <laughs> oh, here we are. I'm going for it. I'm sending it. After FedEx right here. Fresh air. 
The temperature outside is about 10 degrees Celsius, so uh, we're probably in the 50s or 40s of Fahrenheit, so high 40s maybe, somewhere in the 40s. For me, my Canadian blood, that is the perfect spring temperature. For summertime, the perfect summertime temperature for me is like 23 degrees Celsius. It's like 68 Fahrenheit or somewhere in there. Just mm, sun shining, but not too hot, you know, not too humid, just oh, summer, you know? That's a green light, Josh. Come on now, get her in gear, let's go. all these trees will be budding and turning green. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Love this time of year. Daylight hours are getting longer. The snow is melting away. The trees start turning green. The farmers start seeding their fields. Start bringing out the shorts and the t-shirts. You start thinking about going to the lake. So much excitement for the season ahead, you know?
off to my right. Oh yeah, lots of room. Here I come. We're getting there. So this is a mixed load, a whole bunch of different stuff. We got little pieces up there, bigger pieces down there, bigger pieces there. Just about there. And from here, I'm headed to Shakopee again, down Minneapolis. Another load complete. Another happy customer. So now I'm gonna go put some shingles on this trailer. So now we're going to go grab our next load, which is waiting for us in uh, Shakopee, down by Minneapolis there. We're just going to run across the street, the gas station there, grab a coffee and uh, some fruit. They always got some good fresh fruit in there, and we'll be on our way. About two, two and a half hours down uh, to Shakopee from here. My appointment's at 5 p.m., and it is 2 o'clock right now, 3, 4, 5, so I've got three hours to get there. So I don't have too much time to mess around here, so just get going. Just coming up to the city of Minneapolis, St. Paul, merging on to I-694. Or sorry, is this I-494, right? Sorry, 494, going south along the west side of the city. Just gonna go all the way down here to the southwest side make a little right turn into Shakopee and it shouldn't take too long to load hopefully it's as quick as it was the other day that was fast what was that like less than an hour from the time I got there to the time I was driving out the gate and that includes what getting staged getting loaded tying it down putting all my equipment and corners on it going over to the guardhouse, getting my paperwork, sending my paperwork in to the office, getting back in the truck, getting all my paperwork in order, and leaving. I think it was like 52 minutes or something. That would be nice. I'm not going to get back into Canada tonight yet, though. I won't have the hours or energy to get that far. I'll probably get pretty close, though. I might even get right up to Pembina, North Dakota, right at the border. We shall see. But we'll cross the border tomorrow morning, and deliver this freight, and then go home. Tomorrow will be Friday, so I should get home at a decent time tomorrow in the afternoon. And then I have an eye appointment on Monday, so it'll be another bit of a long weekend for me. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Tuesday, I'll be available to hit the road again. Are you gonna get in front of me? Okay, then I don't need to move over. See, that's how you merge. That's how you merge. Very nice. I would clap, but I gotta drive. Very nice. Take notes. That was flawless. My appointment is for 5 p.m. It's 4.27 right now, 4.30. Got a half hour to go, 38 kilometers or uh, like 20 miles. 25, 20, 23 miles. I should be able to get there, but I won't have too much extra time. I'll probably get there at about 10 to five is what I'm thinking. 10 to five, even five to like just before, which is all right. Cause they don't like it if you show up too early. Grand Forks. I have uh, 
two hours and 20 minutes available to me to drive yet. And uh, that'll get me up there. I might, you know, I might even be able to get up to the border itself. We're very close to it. No, I won't be able to get all the way there. I'll probably go to Grand Forks. What are you doing up there? But why are you wandering into my lane? What, what are you doing? Now you're speeding up. Figure out what you want, bud. Find that cruise control. Yeah, this guy's making me nervous. They might be drunk. I'm gonna slow down, let them get ahead of me. Can't stay in their lane. Behind them. Just gonna let the, some space develop between us. Keep my eye on him. Look at that, he's wandering into the other lane there now. I say he might be drunk because it's 11.30 at night. Now, tonight's a Thursday, so it's not like it's a Friday night or anything, but you know, when you drive through a, through a town or city later at night, this is usually around the time, like, oh, there's some police stuff ahead here. I don't wonder what he's going to do with that. <laughs> I was going to say that uh, around this time, you got to be careful because this is when the bar is empty usually, right? And it's interesting, when you drive past a bar in the evening, the parking lot is packed full of people, right? You go inside, everybody's drinking, having a good time. You drive past the bar after closing time, the parking lot's empty. Every time. Just keep that in mind. So, around this time when the bars start closing, you just gotta sort of be a little extra vigilant. Oh, what's going on here? They got a whole bunch of cops. that one truck for somebody's in trouble Came to Grand Forks, North Dakota. I found a spot to park way in the back. I've never parked this far in the back here before. But then again, I don't, I don't stay at the Grand Forks Flying J that often. I'm about an hour, hour and a half from the border, so usually I would just go home, right? But my border clearance hasn't cleared yet. It'll probably be cleared first thing in the morning. And getting tired. There's a rabbit right there. You see that thing? Right by that guy's drive tires. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> yeah, they're park back here. This lot is extremely tight. Like, look at, look at that down there. Let me give you a bit of a better angle. Get rid of that fisheye lens for you. And look at this. Up here, we have more space because these are all drop trailers. But down there... These guys have their trailers hanging way far back. So I don't know how those guys on the left there are gonna get out in the morning. There's a round park for the night anyway. Be nice and quiet. Got one guy idling here. It should be fine. It's not an obnoxious idle. It'll probably just help lull me to sleep. So that's it for today. I really need to get a new seat. Lock the doors. Time to crawl back there and go to bed. Tomorrow night, I'll be at home. My own bed at the house. We'll deliver the, this freight uh, as early as we can tomorrow, and then I just go home for the weekend. Like I said, it's going to be a bit of a long weekend for me because I have an appointment on Monday. I have to uh, get my eyes tested again. They haven't changed at all. It's just they need to test them again before I get new glasses. These glasses are all scratched up now because I was silly and didn't know how to take care of them, even though everybody told me how to take care of them. No, I don't. Have to, I, I can't listen to everybody. I have to learn for myself. It's just the story of my life. So uh, these are going to be my work glasses now. So when I'm like tying down loads and 
bungee because that's how it got scuffed in the first place. A bungee snapped on me and came back around and whipped me right in my glasses. Saved my eyes. So uh, it was a good thing I was wearing them. But it scuffed it right on, on the side. And the rest of us just got scratches. Ugh, I need a new pair. But that pair, those are going to be my fancy pair. They'll, they'll just be for driving and for anything other than work. As soon as I get out of my truck to do some work, these go on. Because I can still see through these. They're, they're, they work just fine. It's just the gun. Actually, you know, at night, I can't even tell. I can't even see the scratches. But as soon as the sun comes out, oh, it's so annoying. So many scratches all over my glasses. Whatever. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. You know, the, you know the drill. Like every other YouTube channel, I'm going to ask that you go down. Just make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Those are, the, those are the best ways to support my channel. And if you watch every single day and you really like what I do and what we're trying to do here and make a positive impact in trucking and in the world in general, uh, you can support us further by clicking the join now button. You can become a member for the, uh, it's like a cup of coffee, cup, cup of Starbucks coffee or two cups of regular coffee, depending on where you get your coffee, I guess. I believe it's around like five bucks anyways. And uh, you get early access to my videos. Cause my videos are like a week behind, but sometimes they're all online waiting to be released. But I only release one per day because I don't want to overwhelm everybody and I want to keep that storyline. I want there to be a video every day. But if you're a member, a premium member, you can just see them all right away. And if you're into that, that's great. And if that doesn't really matter to you, uh, you want to watch them when they come out, well, if you leave me a comment down below, hit that thumbs up button. And the most important thing, hit that subscribe button. That's, uh, that's all I ask. So I ask, uh, I, well, that's not all I ask. I also ask that you please drive safe out there. Uh, think of everyone else around you. Leave a little bit earlier so that you're not in a rush. Let's have fun out there. Let's keep our cool. I'm talking to myself too here. Let's keep our cool and not freak out at other drivers. We all got families and loved ones to go home to. Let's think about that instead. A good way to think of it is when you get mad at somebody and you want to, you know, either flip them off or yell at them or before you do anything crazy, like road rage or anything, don't do that. First of all, think to yourself, is whatever they did to you to make you upset in that moment, is it going to matter in five years? If the answer is no, let it go. Hopefully that hits somebody in the right spot. Because when I heard that, that hit me in the right spot. It's like, you know what? That, that, that's, that's so true. That's so right. You can be so mad in the moment at something that somebody did to you or cut you off or maybe they flipped you off or whatever. It just makes you so mad. It happens to me all the time. I'm a truck driver. People get mad at me all the time. I'm big. I'm slow. I'm in their way. Of course, they're going to get mad at me. But instead of responding, before I respond, I think to myself, huh, in five years, am I going to care? Is this going to matter? If the answer is no, let it go. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Take care.